Welcome back to Digital Futures Education. Today, we have a very special guest, Noel Lema. He's the founder of Coder House, an innovative ed tech platform that's revolutionizing education in Latin America. We'll be diving into the challenges and successes of democratizing education, exploring the strategies behind Coder House's rapid growth, and discussing the cutting edge technologies they're leveraging to stay ahead of the curve. We will also touch on their career services that are helping students achieve their professional goals. Stay tuned for an insightful and powerful conversation. Thank you, Noel. Is that the appropriate mm -hmm. way? Oh, okay. Noel. Noel. Noel Lema. Uh, he's the co-founder of Coder House. Um, you know, fantastic for you to join us today. And um, thanks for joining the channel. Um, and I just have a few questions around the future of education, online learning, and um, excited to have you and um, looking forward to it. Um, with coding education, you know, mm -hmm. it's such a huge, powerful, you know, piece of education now for students around the world. Um, it's becoming essential within the digital age. Um, but there's so many barriers, right? Um, it's and from what I understand in the articles I've read about you, you know, you've spoken a lot about it being your mission to democratize education in Latin America. Um, you know, so what barriers um, and challenges have you had with Coder House? Um, in trying to make quality education both accessible and affordable for students around the world? And what successes have you had in overcoming these? Maybe I, I will answer it in, in Spanish uh, because it is a really complex question. But the, the thing is, aquí in Latin America, hay muchas barreras socioculturales y económicas. Por lo tanto, productos o servicios que son low cost, pero que tienen una propuesta de valor eh, premium o, o extremadamente valorable, son los, que, los servicios o productos que más sirven para democratizar el acceso a, determinadas, eh, a determinados servicios. En nuestro país, Argentina, que es nuestro principal mercado y desde donde nace eh, Coder House, Argentina es un país gigante. Es enorme, es el octavo o noveno país más grande de Latinoamérica. Y en Latinoamérica, en el mundo, perdón, en Latinoamérica tenemos lo mismo en Brasil y lo mismo en México. Son países, una gran extensión territorial con personas distribuidas geográficamente, pero que tienen un problema común, que es el acceso a determinados servicios o determinados productos que por cuestiones geográficas no pueden acceder, ya sea por cuestiones más allá de lo económico de que se ven limitados geográficamente por esto. Coder House, cuando lanzamos nuestra propuesta presencial, teníamos la idea de llevar la educación a cada centro urbano del país. Ya sea en un coworking, en una universidad, en un espacio gubernamental, en un espacio donde podamos impartir el curso. Eso tenía una serie de dificultades, por eso en el 2019 decidimos pivotear y pasar a un modelo online en vivo. No un curso grabado, no un self-paced course, sino algo que vos te tengas que conectar, que tengas la experiencia de interactuar con un profesor y compañeros para poder eh, llevar adelante un curso. Y eso fue clave para nuestro crecimiento exponencial meses después, y obviamente vino después la pandemia y COVID. ¿Por qué? Porque la gente podía acceder a un producto o un servicio súper económico desde la comodidad de, de su casa, e incluso desde el mismísimo celular, pudiendo aprender una habilidad digital en un mundo donde cada vez más se requieren estas habilidades. Tú mencionaste la habilidad de programar, pero sin duda las habilidades para marketing, diseño, producto, data y programación son las habilidades que nuestro público está buscando y son las habilidades que lo pueden catapultar a un éxito eh, tanto económico como sociocultural para poder avanzar eh, en, en su vida. ¿no? Creemos que de alguna manera... La educación, y lo ha sido en todos los países, sobre todo en Argentina, es la palanca que te asciende socialmente. Vos a través de la adquisición de una habilidad clave, como puede ser una habilidad tecnológica, puedes acceder a un mejor trabajo, con un mejor sueldo y poder mejorar tu, tu situación socioeconómica. So my, my understanding of your answer with my, my Spanish is limited, but I'm taking from, <laughs> you know, what you said is, you know, in such a large company like country like Argentina, you mm -hmm. know, it's, it's such a benefit to have, um, you know, the, the economics of became, becoming upskilled is mm -hmm. the advantage to doing it online. Yeah. And 
um, be able to serve people who um, have limited resources in some situations to be able to get those skills um, and also be able to, you know, empower the country with um, people who are able to work in the field, um, mm -hmm. upskill and get their skills at a, at more, a, more, an, a more a more efficient education, um, utilizing online learning through you know, your platform. Mm -hmm. um, and you also see that as, you know, kind of an expansion into Mexico, um, but you're doing a big expansion into Mexico. Um, and I'll let you kind of expound on that a little bit, but um, mm -hmm. my takeaway, just so I can kind of understand the framing question is that it's a, that really the empowerment through the online learning piece, economics, ability to upskill. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, totally. You, you understand it really good well because I, I will try to explain in other words. Cuando damos un curso online en vivo, significa que un curso online en vivo que comienza en determinados días, que tiene determinados horarios y que se dicta durante determinado tiempo, es muy similar a lo que tú y yo hemos desarrollado a lo largo de nuestra vida. Fuimos al jardín de infantes, al kinder, fuimos al, al colegio, fuimos a la universidad, hicimos maestrías, hicimos cursos y siempre lo hicimos en determinado momento, durante determinados días, durante determinado tiempo y rodeados de personas. Simplemente llevamos esa experiencia mediante una plataforma online, en este caso utilizamos Zoom para poder dar las clases, y eso es lo que la gente está buscando, conectar con otras personas a través de un entorno, en este caso virtual, pero que esa experiencia sea lo más similar a esa experiencia con la cual fuimos formados a lo largo de toda nuestra vida. Y, y vuelvo sobre la, la capacidad geográfica de conectarte con otras personas, porque capaz ibas al colegio de tu pueblo o a la universidad de la ciudad más cercana y hoy, a través de un curso en vivo, que puedes estar conectado con otras 50, 100 personas de todas partes del mundo, no solo de Argentina, eso es una gran oportunidad para mucha gente de conocer gente nueva a través de un curso. Por lo tanto, no solo es el aprendizaje de una habilidad técnica o una habilidad blanda, sino con quién lo estás haciendo. Y eso es parte de los ingredientes del éxito que hoy tenemos de poder conectar gente a través de la educación para que puedan, de nuevo, eh, ascender socialmente. Y hoy en Argentina necesitamos eso. La educación, de alguna manera, la, la impartida por el, por el gobierno, los gobiernos de Latinoamérica, está años atrasado. Y, y claramente lo está, o, o hace sus mejores esfuerzos, porque mover la maquinaria del Estado para profesionalizar y tener mejores programas educativos lleva tiempo. Nosotros formamos a 30.000, 40.000, 50.000 personas por mes, el Estado tiene que formar a 4 o 5 millones. Estamos hablando de otra, solamente está hablando del Estado argentino, ¿no? no me quiero ni imaginar Brasil o México, que tiene una escala de millones de millones de estudiantes de, de, de todo tipo de grado, y es un gran desafío para nosotros poder impartir la misma calidad en una escala cada vez mayor y que la calidad no se pierda. Y entiendo que la, la, la universidad, sobre todo la privada, trata de ir a a una solución cada vez mejor, pero nosotros como somos una startup o somos una, otro tipo de organización, podemos ofrecerle una actualización más rápida, unas habilidades técnicas mejores y, una, y un formato más adecuado eh, para todas las personas en, en, en el mundo, sobre todo y principalmente en Argentina. And it's, what you're doing is really providing an amazing service too, like just, I mean, where regular education isn't able to kind of step in you know, and, and fill the gap. Um, I definitely think, you know, what I've, you know, what I've learned, you know, from you is that, um, you know, that there's definitely such a huge gap between industry and where college leaves off now, um, mm -hmm. in all ways. So, um, you know, I, you know, I, I think it's a powerful thing what you're doing and I, I'm, you know, very empowering to see, and I know that you're empowering a lot of people as well. So, um, I'm, you know, I, it's just an amazing thing. So I love seeing it and I, I know it's benefiting a lot of people. So um, I think it's very, very powerful. Uh, Thanks. So Coder House has experienced, you know, a lot of growth um, mm -hmm. and, you know, scaling from a small operation to this, you know, what you have as a leading ed tech platform um, mm -hmm. and expanding quite a bit. Can you share some of the key strategies that have contributed to the rapid expansion? Um, and what are your future plans to continue with the growth trajectory? Sure. There is no secret sauce here. Everyone will uh, found, found this in the same things. But the key thing for me is tener un branding espectacular. Y esto lo aprendí de Chris. 
Christian, Christian Patino is, is the CEO of Color House and the, and the original founder and the creator of the concept. He always says that branding is everything, and he have it's he's totally true about it because education is not a sexy industry. It's not something that everyone needs it, but if you do it in a sexy way or you do it with an excellent branding, a beautiful branding, everyone wants to sign up. And esas son creo que creo que es la clave convertir algo sexy. Eh, perdón el término, pero creo que creo, queda el concepto bien claro, en algo que todo el mundo quiera, quiera sumarse. Y qué mejor que la educación. No es que estás a, aprendiendo algo por el mero hecho de perder el tiempo. Estás invirtiendo tu tiempo, tu dinero y tu esfuerzo en adquirir una habilidad que te permita eh, ascender socialmente o mantenerte competitivo. Incluso tú dijiste algo que es, eh, es importante, nuestro principal customer is someone who already have previous studies. La, lo que quiero decir es, ya son personas que tienen estudios previos. Por lo tanto, nuestro, nuestro principal cliente wants to do an upskill. An upskill that provides him with new tools to keep him up in the market, in the, in the labor market, where he can access to better opportunities in different countries or in the same countries. But doing an upskill is what we do. We do an upskill for all of what, what I say before that university and college give the tools that they can. And we provide with new tools, new techniques, new abilities, uh, new ways of doing things in the faster way that we can because the market doesn't uh, wait. For us uh, right. to catch up so everyone wants to open up with uh, new abilities or want to gain new abilities uh, and doing upskill is, is is our main customer that they want to to upskill themselves so the second one is the rest skill of course and the third is entrepreneurial uh, entrepreneurial person who wants to acquire many skills that they can to uh, apply in their in their, in their uh, in their company or their small business or whatever. So what I want to say is, uh, and follow up the, the question, is necesitamos generar más y mejores herramientas de la manera más rápida posible para que todas las personas que tengan un estudio previo o no lo tengan puedan adquirir una habilidad que les permita de nuevo eh, ascender socialmente y, y mantenerse competitivo en un mercado, en un mercado que se ha vuelto global, en un mercado que no va a esperar a nadie y que necesita constantemente estar actualizado. Nuestros programas se actualizan más de una vez por año, incluyendo AI eh, o nuevas herramientas, o nuevas soluciones, porque es lo que las personas están buscando. Buscan adquirir una nueva herramienta que les permita diferenciarse o les permita mantenerse competitivas en el mercado y eso es lo que eh, hoy hacemos lo hacemos muy bien, lo hacemos en escala, que es lo que el cliente necesita. And so, I mean, what I, you know, speaking to the sexy, the sexy piece, I think, <laughs> um, I think you're, you know, you're also the the marketing and the branding is timely too, in that you know, education not looked at traditionally as you know sexy, um, but now it needs to be. It needs to be mm -hmm. something trending. You know, it needs to trend. Exactly. You know, it needs to have, you know, the, the skills are changing so quickly that if you're not trending and and definitely your clientele who's looking to upskill is younger and transitioning faster. And, mm -hmm. you know, you know, education is trending so quickly because the change is sort of ch changing so quickly that there is an excitement there. You know, there is mm -hmm. an energy there that um, I think definitely, you know, you look at the branding of Coder House, they definitely have, have hit it on the head, you know, and definitely as soon as I, as soon as I saw your logo and your branding and your in, online, it's like, you're definitely, you know, positioned as that, that company that people look to as, you know, for that course, that exciting course mm -hmm. that, you know, they can't get anywhere else or they they didn't, weren't able to take at their university or, but their supervisor might be asking them to upskill in, or they know their next opportunity is going to, 
require it, right? So no, I mm -hmm. I definitely see you know you're hitting kind of that trend of that upskill in a way. You know, people's perceptions are definitely you're leading you're leading the charge of the branding in terms of how mm -hmm. um, perceptions of education and how much education and when um, are needed, you know, so it, it's a trending topic and changing and it's exciting and it is sexy. It is like, a, um, you know, something to be cool and something to kind of, uh, look for and, and know about and stay on top of, and, you know, everything's changing so quickly. So exactly. in the same light, you know, my third question here, um, kind of hits along the same, the same area. Um, you know, innovation's key. You know, we always hear about innovation and constantly trying to stay ahead of the curve. Um, you know, online education is definitely an area that um, innovation is incredibly important because of the level of accessibility that it provides and also its ability to provide and update, you know, curriculums and materials fast evolving. Mm -hmm. It is definitely much more advantageous than some sit and get in a classroom um, in a lot of ways. So how how is Coder House um trying to stay ahead of the emerging trends and what educational technologies do you find the most promising in terms yeah. of and, and educational technologies you know mm -hmm. could be you know part of what you're utilizing on your platform but also could be um you know strategies that you think the company needs to kind of take advantage of to kind of you know stay on top of what's coming okay yeah really it's a really beautiful and exciting question because when we're looking for what is needed? What? What is the necessity of the market? How how we can choose a course over another one? Um, we look for the trends, and those trends are usually uh, already. Well, I forgot the word. Uh, like already available data. Av totally available data from, for example, from the web, the, forum, the world, the World Economic Forum. Uh, they made a report, and a lot of consulting firms do the same, uh, as Gartner or Forbes or whatever, mm -hmm. or, or A or Carmen uh, Pichy or uh, McKinsey or whatever. Ellos crean un reporte que comúnmente se llama Futuro del Trabajo or Future of Work. And they try to rank whatever the skills they needed uh, in the near future. For example, the, the, the most popular one is the, the was made by the World Economic Forum, that it's the name of this uh, future of work. Mm -hmm. And they trying to rank the next 25 abilities that is needed for almost every industry in the world. And in the last year, we see some changes in that. For example, in the 2020, in the 2010, they say that programming is a must for every person who wants to enter in the IT uh, industry, in every industry. Because there was a gap between the companies that uh, aren't digitalized and the companies who are digitalized, or have the, uh, an intern uh, IT team or whatever, and the companies who doesn't. But in los últimos 15 or 20 años, perdón, en los últimos 10 años, sobre todo con el antes, el durante y el después de la pandemia because the pandemic changed every rule that we know, they changed the abilities that, are what, that the, the, the whole market required. For example, hace seis años, uh, nosotros teníamos un solo curso de data. And that course was data analytics. That was the whole course. Yeah. Only preparation about data, and, that, and that, that's it. If we read the, those reports, we started to see that data was the key feature for AI, for example, or it was the key feature of the company who wants to be data driven, or, or the next gen of the big data, because from the 2010 to 2020, the key word was big data, big data, data lakes, and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, and now the, those reports say that the main ability that you need is data analytics and data creative. Those are the first one and the second one. The following uh, until the 10th one is how we manage people around the globe, how we manage every teams, 
how we as human are part of this uh, chain of production because AI is everything, sorry, is, is everywhere, in every process. And who are we in, the, in that process? So the soft skills or the human skills, or the power skills, are the skills that are ranked in the top 10 abilities that uh, this future of work uh, reports says that we need to develop. And that is the main reason that we develop a lot of courses around data, for example, the course of uh, that we teach about Excel, Excel Vance, Power BI, Tableau, Logger Studio, Data Science, Data Analytics, of course, R, that is a language for statistics, R type of courses that were born because the market demand that knowledge, because those are those in the past were only one class or at least two class for the data analytics course. And right now, those are full courses for four, six, eight weeks. Um, and those are the main things that are uh, developed right now. And the second one is the soft skill or the power skill of the human skills, whatever you name it, that are related to how we as human are in our players in this uh, chain of production of software or whatever. And we developed the business schools. The business school was the key of joining the leadership skills, speaking skills, negotiation skills, uh, administration of every business, and so on. And those are the uh, courses that are really trending right now for us. And we see massive adoption of these uh, abilities. So the market needs people. People needs ability to manage other people or trying to communicate with other people, trying to work with other people. So we developed these courses because we see those trends in all of these reports. Of course, the, we have the, the courses about the design and marketing mm -hmm. and programming and so on. Those are evergreen in some ways. Yep. But we see a massive adoption B2B sector and in the B2C, in the, in the B2C of how we acquire these abilities about data, about business skills that are really core in, in every company. So you got me thinking a little bit because I've been doing mm -hmm. some research into um, you know, remote work and mm -hmm. you know the, the challenges, you know, but also the huge benefits for LATAM particularly and those in LATAM to be able to you know, leverage remote work skills or programming skills to um, you know, you know, have a, you know, better paycheck, a better financial future through, you know, maybe acquiring a job, you know, you know, in the United States or somewhere else. Mm -hmm. What, what predictions do you have around um, the expansion of remote work positions and how that might influence, you know, what Coder House might offer in the future? Um, because I would imagine that that is going to continue to expand. The economy is mm -hmm. going to continue to support it. Um, I'm just yeah. wondering, you know, is, is Coder House thought about that piece of the power of remote work and just bringing countries together and expanding and upskilling that way to support and, mm -hmm. you know, that piece? I think uh, that is a good question. Because I, I met a guy, uh, an old friend of mine, who said that we are such a linear, or we are uh, people who live in Latin America, are the best perk in the economics because we are in a line with the time zone of the US. Hello, yes. And US have the money and we have the task, the workforce. And we prepare those workforce because we have two hours from the one side of the country of the US and two hours from the other one. And we are in a very good economic, economic and talent position here in Argentina because maybe my English is not the best one, but you can find people who speak really fluent in English and have a lot of talent, massive talent. And I see that uh, in the last decade, a lot of companies, a lot of consultant firms like Globant or Mercado Libre or not Mercado Libre especially, but Globant or Global Logic or uh, companies that, uh, like that that provide service to the US because that is the main uh, client here in Latin America or main client here in Argentina because everyone wants to provide service to that, to that country. And I see that a lot of com a small firms about the staff augmentation of recruiting firms have a base here 
trying to recruit the best talent here in Argentina or Chile or Hawaii or whatever uh, and provide those talent to the in US. And related to the question is those talent obviously are based here in Argentina and they are usually not going to fly it any soon, anytime soon to the US or any other country. Uh, so the remote work, I say that probably will be stand for a little bit long uh, after the pandemic, of course. But we see that a lot of companies are going back to the offices. Maybe a new office, maybe a small one or whatever, but they try to offer uh, to get back to the office. Mm -hmm. uh, we have an office, but we have a really large team uh, distributed in every country almost, almost in every country. So we are not remote. Uh, we are fully remote in some ways. Not, we, are not, we don't need to be in an office, but we are seeing that a lot of companies are required to attend to the office at least one, once a week or two, two a week. So if you hire someone, that people or that person need to be really close to the office because mm -hmm. it will be impossible. So I say that maybe in the near, we are going to live in this remote way of working or hybrid way of working for a long time, but maybe no, and there will be some position that it's required to be really close to the office or maybe in the office. Sure. And I think, um, you know, we may see some shifts with AI due to job displacement that might mm -hmm. make some of those changes too, maybe. Um, you know, you got me thinking too, um, I'm sorry, this is a little off the script here, but these are, you know, th two like topics that I've just noticed with, you know, Argentina in particular, that's attracted me to like looking into them and finding you and kind of, you mm -hmm. know, doing additional research. Um, you know, some of my initial, you know, when I was looking into Latin American countries and their, I would say their educational technology kind of structure, you know, what they have in terms of roles within their education systems. Um, I found Argentina uh, to be particularly, you know, robust with roles that, you know, provided support for, you know, digital pedagogy and um, instructional design around, you know, utilizing digital tools. And, you know, some of these roles I noticed were much more prevalent in Argentina than maybe some of the other Latin American countries. And I found that interesting. Um, I don't, know for certain, you know, country for country, if that's as accurate as maybe my own, you know, on informal kind of research provided. But do you do you get the sense in Argentina or, you know, also, you know, in Buenos Aires and in Cabo that, you know, that kind of focus or additional kind of support for technology and education, um, even in, you know, I know the there's definitely a, a, a difference between public and private schools in those areas. But um, what's your perception of, you know, Argentina, ed tech, educational technology, and maybe, you know, the existence of those roles, which is incredibly helpful across education structure. But um, is it more prevalent in Argentina in that type of structure than maybe other places? Maybe, maybe. I, I, I really don't know because I, I see it as a normal uh, way of living, probably in other province, maybe, because Buenos Aires is overdeveloped. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of provinces here in Argentina who are not really well developed in any way. Uh, and maybe it's really common. I really don't know. Uh, yeah. Maybe it's common in Brazil uh, or maybe in, in Mexico. Uh, but I think it's, it's good to know if, with, with your perspective that you uh, valorize that. Yeah, I'm just, uh, just something that I noticed. So I just was curious. Yeah. I figured I'd, I'd ask. Um, so, you know, career services and Coder House, you know, mm -hmm. you have some career services as part of your offerings, um, you know, including mock interviews and, you know, working with LinkedIn to enhance your, your profiles. Mm -hmm. um, you know, how do the services related to uh, career services and supporting, you know, the people who are upskilling um, using your services, um, how do these, in, you know, how do you support students in that kind of way of, you know, helping them kind of get to the next step within their career? Okay. It, for us, from the from the not the early beginnings, but after we pivot to an online proposal, um, we see that a lot of people that are reskilling or, or who want to have reskill themselves or upskill themselves want to learn more about how to get a job, how to change careers, how to feel comfortable in an interview, how to 
prepare themselves to the next step in their career. So education for us, um, looking for a job, looking for a change, looking for something else in, in their career, in their professional career, is something really related. For example, right now, we created a, a massive uh, proposal for those who want to improve their career, and we call it them the Color Camp. Color Camp is a, is a free and open to everyone. It's not required to be to, to, see, to be a student of one of our courses. So everyone, to anyone who wants to uh, change their career or want to have a personal brand, uh, make some mock interviews, want to know more about how we can change uh, uh, our career goals or how to set goals for our careers. So we pre we prepare all of these interviews for, I and mean, starting the next week, uh, mm -hmm. the next week or during all of August, and we see a massive. Uh, because uh, a massive attendance of this or a fulfill of the application form that we made, we reached the 13,000 uh, 13, students uh, applic applicate for this. And almost the half doesn't have a job and want to have a job. And a part of that half, almost a third, doesn't have a LinkedIn. So we are in the basic of how we can teach that you have to have a LinkedIn, or have you have to have a, a an online presence? Have to have your uh, to wish at, your digital uh, signature in, in internet, where you can post wherever you are working, uh, the things that you want, the thing that you can help others, and and we need we need to do uh, these kind of initiatives because. I, I think in, in my way, because I have a particular type of leadership, that I need to close the, the golden circle of the, or some of the, the virtual, the, it's a circular virtual, it's in, it's in Spanish, the virtuos of the, the circle of virtues or whatever, I don't know, um, where I can teach you a, 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 a skill, I give you the tools to get a job, or give you a, a job because you can be a teacher or you can be a tutor or in color house. And the circles continue and continue to close themselves. And we think this is, is have to have a, a really positive impact in the, in the, in the, in the audience, in our students or non students or in the population of every country. So we are going to agree everything for free. Uh, on it's online and it's of course in a sync mode. Uh, sorry, in a sync mode, we have online classes for that, uh, and, and we think that is a really good way of retribute to the to the people who want to seek for a new uh, to a new job or change the career. Because here in Argentina, that is our main uh, market. A lot of people lost their job in the last semester because mm -hmm. we have this kind of economic crisis, the recession of uh, uh, name it, whatever you like. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people want to improve themselves and want to acquire a job or work uh, in you know, doing the things that they study. So we are doing this color camp here and we are doing the same in Brazil. Uh, mm -hmm. The name of the is Reboot. No, that's great. That's great. And it's definitely like, those are definitely the skills that I think, you know, some people might not take that more advanced course mm -hmm. until they develop that online presence, right? And they get themselves mm -hmm. in a place where they can get the opportunity for the interview or the the, ne the next step. Um, so, how, you know, do you have a specific practice for how you, um, which courses you decide to offer? You know, other than that, you know, you spoke a little bit about the world economic uh, forum mm -hmm. data. Um, are there any other, you know, ways that, you know, what methods do you use to select courses that you, you teach? Um, and what's the process look like? Okay. For example, the, the first one is the example that I give you before that we are starting with one course, for example, the data analytics course or leadership and team management who is the, the other type of course. And we recollect a massive amount of feedback. We are obsessed with recollecting feedback. And in those feedback, we identify those requirements. 
For example, if in the analytics uh, data analytics course we give one class of Power BI, for example, and people say that the class uh, is was short in time, there was a lot of topics to see uh, that are not covered in the course, we create a course because a lot of people say the same. Mm -hmm. And we give it the space and we uh, expand the proposal, the, 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 data, the data vertical. And with the leadership, uh, it happened the same. A lot of people say that want to gain more negotiation skills, more business administration skills, and we create a course about it. For example, we are working right now in creating a course about people experience because it's the new way of thinking human resources in every company because people who work in company want to have the best experience. And of course, I, I will say that people experience was part of recollecting info from all of these future of work reports, but recollecting feedback is one of the best ways of creating new product or service based in the, in the experience that people have uh, during the course. And the second one is, of course, looking for Google Trends. Mm -hmm. The Google Trend is always uh, something that you have to look at because if you want to publish a, a course about X, X topic, uh, you, want, you have to be sure that that topic have some uh, search numbers. Mm -hmm. uh, because probably you are creating a really niche type of content that doesn't have a recurrency, doesn't have a really small amount of people who are willing to pay for that course. Mm -hmm. So uh, you have to look at both of them because we made some mistakes looking only one side of the coin because, for example, we create a course about web, uh, web, threads, uh, web tree. Uh, mm -hmm. that's says a lot of things about new ways of doing the web or whatever. And the search were good, the trends were good, the things that uh, we look up about that was quite good or it give, give us the signs that it will be, it will, it would have been a good course. And when we publish it, uh, no one purchased it. No one wanted it. Um, hmm. It doesn't translate the signs that I said before with people who are willing to pay for that. So uh, those are the main things that uh, we look up when we are uh, open, open develop for new courses. And I would imagine that um, industry demand also kind of has a big play in what people are looking for, right? Um, has Do you get any specific feedback from industry on your courses? Have you had a chance, you know, what, what kind of feedback have you gotten from industry, you know, from people that, you know, have people who work for them, who've taken some Coder House courses, and what kind of feedback have you gotten? Feedback about the creation of courses or feedback about how... Well, uh, I guess demands? either people who've taken courses with Coder House and have gone and worked in places and they, they've been maybe mm -hmm. satisfied with, you know, the training that people have gotten or maybe something you've offered specifically for, you know, a corporate client or, you know, something like that. Sure. Uh, well, well, we have two types of clients, of course, the B2B, the B2B clients and the B2C clients. The B2C clients, um, I will relate it to one of your questions, uh, well, the key of the, our success is to have people who success after the course. The testimonies are the first uh, way of talking about our brand, but uh, with the uh, with, the, with people who already take the course and have something to say about their story. A story about any any student that works in a very large company or a very popular company who made a course in Coder House and finally get that opportunity or something else like that uh, is the best feedback that we can give to the, uh, any new customer that are willing to or they expect uh, to gain more uh, experience. So we have those experience about success stories, testimonies, uh, who people people who probably don't know nothing or probably know something, do the course, learn a skill, apply to different job and finally get that job or they ch that, that change in their life. And the second one is the, is the corporate one. The corporate one is, is, the, is the different feedback because usually 
companies or small business uh, who have different type of uh, employees who have different needs are those needs or the, you know, those uh, particular skills that need to be developed are really aligned with the goals of the company. Mm -hmm. Because, for example, if the company wants to be data driven and usually they hire someone who have this skill, probably need to uh, give a course about analytics or give a course about Excel or Power BI or whatever. And we try to recollect those testimonies because after the course, they see an instant impact in their operation, especially for people who operate with Excel. Because Excel, if you don't know Excel and you think you know Excel, after you learn the course, you can apply on well, during the course, of course, it, you can apply those knowledge in your team and your financial team, your operation team, and you see how efficient people who uh, are after gaining new skills to directly to the to a task, your daily, daily work. Right. That's interesting. Yeah, but that's, you know, but that's, those are two different, you know, definitely two different types of clients. So the outcomes, mm -hmm. you know, are definitely different, right? And, um, but you're serving different needs there. Um, so what, what advice would you give to entrepreneurs who are looking to start a tech or education related business now that you've, you've come this far? It's a good question. Another good question because I usually mentor uh, a lot of people who have uh, ed tech companies or ed tech related companies, and they think that create their custom platform. They need the custom platform. They need a, a, an online way of doing things are a must, uh, and it's not really a must. We of course develop our own software. I develop a lot of a lot of a lot of the basics of Color House, but I see that in the last ten years, there are a lot of new ways of giving courses, uh, online courses or presential or offline courses or whatever, and those tools are really cheap. Because if I want to start a code course again, I go directly to, to a no-code solution that are, related, are prepared to give courses, to upload content, and so on. Because it's the fastest way and the cheapest way. And usually those uh, platforms are prepared to scale at an infinite level. Uh, the limit is the money that you have. And we develop everything. And that is something that takes a massive amount of time. Mm -hmm. massive amount of that. And I take courses in the in, in a lot of small companies who are specializing in, in a particular course. Uh, and I see they usually use, uh, for example, Google Classroom or Eduflow or the previous uh, Eduflow platform or another kind of platform that gives the possibility to upload the Zoom link or the mid link and upload the content or uh, whatever. Uh, so they usually I usually recommend that just to start, give a course to five to 10 people, and that's it. No one doesn't need to give classes to thousands and thousands for a student each month. Just be really good in the course that you give. If you are really good in marketing, okay, give the best marketing course uh, with your own methodology, with your own practice, with your own rules, and give it the best. And it's got to be the best. And, and I say uh, after this, because everyone, well, not everyone can uh, give the course, but everything that you want to do, do it, do it in an 11 star methodology. You can give the service, put it that level of service in an 11 star scale. If you can give a 10 star, a third, five stars uh, service, well, how much it takes to give an 11 star. 11 star service and trying to move more, uh, with a better service, with a better quality and at the lowest price and give it in a massive way or give it in a scale well that you are uh, willing to uh, or your possibilities uh, are to give that course. Because I see courses that are one person, 5,000 students and the quality doesn't change. Uh, and the prices are were really low, and it only takes a Google Classroom and a Zoom link. Mm. That's it. 
because what the thing that I learned in the last 10 years is it doesn't matter always the platform, the course, the, your Instagram page, your LinkedIn page. What it matters the most is the content that you give to the people. If the content is the worst, the teacher is the worst, the tutor is the worst, the presentation are the worst, everything is awful. Everything is terrible. That doesn't are. But if your content are great, your teacher is awesome, or you are awesome given the, the, the topic that you are specialized in, everything is great. It doesn't matter the platform. It doesn't matter if you communication through WhatsApp, Telegram, or whatever you like. The content must be awesome. 11 star. And that it doesn't have to. That, that, really is, that is really the must. You have to have an 11 star course. And everything comes after the platform, the communication, events, whatever. That's great advice. Thank you. That's great advice. I think that's, yeah, because it's definitely, you know, there's definite drop offs when people try to mm -hmm. either try to do too much or too little or try to scale too quickly, I think, too. Mm -hmm. see a lot of um, things aren't people. And the, you know, it's hard enough, I think, you know, to get people to complete courses alone. So, you, you know, you, you're always trying to, you know, get them to the point where they're, you know, completion of the course and are actually able to give good feedback so you can iterate, right? And kind of um, take that knowledge forward. Um, mm -hmm. So do you, does Coder House, does Coder House have any exciting partnerships or collaborations um, that you're currently involved in that you'd be, you know, willing to share or talk about just briefly? Sure. Uh, one of the, one, another one of the key, uh, the key of success is doing partnerships. Partnership is one of the best things that has happened to us because we like to have uh, initiatives through co-branding. Co-branding is the joint venture of two companies and the, the result is education. So we usually create co-branding to a creation of courses, certificated courses, doing webinars, doing perks, uh, giving perks to the employees to another company and so on. Uh, so we're trying to create New collaboration, for example, here in Binary is a really large company that it's named Cocos Capital. It's a fintech company. And we certify our personal finances course through them. And we create a really good partnership. Another one is related to the job seeking people who want to improve themselves. And we create an alliance with ADECO. ADECO is one of the largest company in the recruitment around the globe. And we create a, a really good partnership with them. So we usually are trying to create in, we, we, we work in create those types of relation. People or, or company in this case, that are aligned with us in, in giving really good education to a massive amount of people, giving more opportunities in the case of ADECO. Uh, so we can create a better experience, a better, uh, product or service to our students. So we try to find those partnerships that are uh, key to, to the people who attend one of our courses. So we are in, always trying to seek new partnerships here in Argentina, Chile, Uruguay, Colombia, Peru, Venezuela, in Mexico, Brazil. So mm -hmm. it's always better to do it uh, with partners. And would you say, you know, you went from kind of a, you know, uh, you know, an education company that was focused a lot in upskilling, maybe in the te technology mm -hmm. areas to now, you know, definitely a, an expansion, like you said, into human resources and these other business development areas. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, kind of, do you see that? That's, you know, sounds like the future. Um, and what, what else, what what do you see in the, in the coming year? Like what's the next, you know, as you move into this, you know, this what's what are the big exciting things happening with Coder House this year that you think um, are the biggest things to share in terms of news about Coder House? Sure, uh, we are. Well, last week we launched the, our 3.0 methodology that is really related to the next step of online education because right now usually people know us because we in the past give offline courses or, or in this presential way. Uh, we are right now giving line of line courses uh, where it happened two times a week, two hours each class in a sync mode. And we, for the last months, 
we are testing with the flex methodology. And the flex methodology is one class a week with the same time, uh, two hours each class. And we prepare a lot of content that are recorded before uh, to give it to the students. And right now we are moving almost every course for in that type of methodology to one class. And that is that happened a lot of, uh, doesn't happen because we see in the stars. We, it happened because mm -hmm. we recollect some feedback and the, and the people are, not, not every people, not, not almost everyone, but a lot of people say that they can attend to two times a week or once a week each Saturday. So we are moving a lot of our courses to this flex methodology where you attend to one, of, uh, one class each, uh, each week without losing the sync class because that are our mm -hmm. best advantage in this business. Uh, but we are always recollected feedback, listen to the students, listen to our users and see how better can be our service, how can be 11 star service. If the people doesn't have the possibility, the possibility to attend to one, two classes a week, well, we are trying to provide a service that is happening once a week with a lot of record the content, but without losing the sync mode uh, once a week. So those are one of the, the things that are, are developing right now. No, that's a great. No, thank you so much today. I appreciate all the time and your willingness to speak with me and, you know, we'll cross the language barrier a little bit here. Sure. And, uh, um, I definitely wanted to meet in person, at, you know, but maybe in the future you'll be open to joining sure. up again. And um, I look forward to that. And I, and I appreciate all your insight today and um, look forward to, um, you know, watching Coder House grow over the coming year. And um, it's definitely cool insight to see how you're moving into those other business areas, such as human resources and uh, entrepreneurship skills. And um, it's great to know that you're, you know, you're also looking at the World Economic Forum data around the next steps and what's happening. Um, and always looking for the iterative feedback on the courses. So mm -hmm. thank you. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate well, it. And thank you for the invitation, Daniel. No it was, problem. It was really awesome. No. Really challenging for me, eh? because <laughs> I don't usually use, I don't usually take uh, interviews in English. So probably this is one of the first one or the second one, uh, because our main market is in Spanish. But uh, it was no, really I, challenging and I feel really, really good. No, nah, sounds great. And I'll include translations in both languages for those who might see it in either one. So um, I, I've, you know, and share it out with people because I, there's definitely, I think, um, you know, definitely with the people who are looking for remote work and people who are upskilling, um, you know, one of those challenges is the language barrier, which is like, mm -hmm. you know, getting, you know, eroded at and definitely with, you know, a lot of people in Argentina are, you know, a higher percentage are probably fluent or not fluent, but are, you know, learning English or having, you know, education in English. And, um, you know, you know, Americans should be learning more Spanish too. So, um, probably. yeah. And, you know, trying to bridge those gaps. So I appreciate, you know, you coming on and, you know, that's what a lot of my content is about. It's just trying to bridge those gaps between um, upskilling, reskilling and technology and education. So thank you so much for your time again. Thank you. Norman. Then I will. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Thank you.